standard pencil cases. That's the video I'm meant to be doing, but I prefer doing this at the moment. If you can see that, it's pretty old. It's pretty dirty. I'll show you the same technique I used to transform this plane, which looked like, to now looking like that. Number one thing that makes me cringe is it doesn't matter if it's restoration work, and I used to do a lot of restoration work, or you're doing up a piece of furniture, the number one thing people say to me is, oh, I'm going to sand it back. Forget sandpaper. Get rid of sandpaper. You don't want sandpaper on these types of jobs. Fair enough, if it's been painted, you can get sandpaper or strip it to get the paint off. But if it's an old tool or an old cabinet that's got shellac on it, or it might have an oil on it, or it might have a wax on it, leave the sandpaper for another job. Here's the best way to clean it up. Now, all I've got here is metho. This actually is DAA, but methylated spirits from the hardware shop or the corner convenience store will do. I've got three grades of steel wool. I've got a very coarse one, which is a number two. I've got a not so coarse one, which is a number one. And then I've got what they call fine. But I'm not using the good stuff. This Libron 4.0 steel wool, I wouldn't waste on a tool and I wouldn't waste on an odd job. This is primo stuff for when I'm doing furniture and French polishing. So we're not using Libron, but if you're going to do furniture up, get some of that. It's good for finishing your furniture off. Okay, so I'll start with a bit of number two steel wool. Yeah, we'll have a look at that plane there. We'll just do this surface here. Methylated spirits on there. doesn't matter if it slops on the job. Leave it on there for a little bit if you like. You don't have to. And then very, very lightly rub. And I'll do this in front of the camera. Now that's only a few seconds. And again, up here, this part here, I'll do the same. Metho, let it soak in for a bit because you're talking in this case decades of sweat and dirt and stuff that's floating around in your workshop. And then just give it a really good rub with the number two. And what I'm doing is maintaining the integrity of the finish. I'm just taking all the gunk off that's built up over the years, so I'm not abrading it with an abrasive paper. Look how much cleaner that is. Get a piece of rag, put some methyl on the rag, and then just wipe where you've been rubbing. Look how much cleaner that has come up. And I've maintained not so much the patina, but the finish on it. Now to replace the patina and to make it look absolutely spectacular again, um, you could use raw linseed oil. That works. I don't particularly like boiled linseed oil for this job because boiled will dry, whereas linseed will soak in and eventually it will dry, but it'll take a few days. And what I've got here is raw linseed oil with gum terps, eucalyptus terps. Um, I think ordinary turps are do, but gum turps smells really nice. Now with the number one steel wool, break a bit off, put the gum turps and linseed oil mix on there, and then just rub it in. Doesn't matter if you put a lot on there, but you just rub it in with the steel wool. Now, bearing in mind, I haven't done this entire plane. I'll finish it later. But just to give you an idea of how easy that was, look at the difference now. That's all been cleaned. That part there we haven't touched. And that part there we've left. So you can imagine what this side's going to look like. Now, the same thing when it comes to the irons. Don't go on the grinding wheel, don't go on the wire wheel. I used to, I used to be a devotee of the wire wheel, but now I've found 
bit of 240, wet and dry, and maybe 600 for finishing off. To get some loose stuff off, again, go back to the um, very coarse steel wool. And in this case, I've got some kerosene. Dip the steel wool in the kerosene and just give the blade or any of the metal parts a good rub. And that will get rid of any of the loose particles of rust. And then with the 240, again, I dip that into the kerosene and give it a good rub up and down on the metal parts. Now most of this you're not going to get shiny because in those days their steel wasn't shiny, it was left blue. But you'll feel it when it's nice and smooth and that's all you want as far as you want to go. Same on the backs of the blades. This one needs a bit of work where that's all built up and pitted. Again, a bit of kerosene. Clean off the excess. And then a bit of 240 wet and dry. Just very softly go up and down and from side to side. And although that's nowhere near what I want it to be, you can see it's starting to look quite presentable. So there you go. A couple of household products. We've got a bit of metho, a bit of caro, a bit of linseed oil, three different grades of steel wool, dirty old rag, a bit of time on your hands, and the rewards, I kid you not, are absolutely spectacular. So if you find some bargains out there, little word of uh, advice, when you're looking, make sure that it is intact and it hasn't got big splits or things missing. But if you come across an absolute gem like this, $40, and it took me an afternoon. And once for luck, I don't know about you, but I love that sound. So that's it, I'm going back to the pencil cases. This is Steve pulling the shed door down and saying, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, enjoy your woodwork, and enjoy your time living in the past. Bye for now. This is the round plane that I partly cleaned up in that video. And as you can tell, it has really come up nicely.